One of the micronutrients we want you to take a look at on your farm is copper. That's our topic today. When it comes to copper, when we think about all the things that, that are functions within the plant, this is really where you want to look with micronutrients. And it's been interesting to me getting to know a lot of the highest yielding farmers around the country and around the world when they have an issue in their plant and maybe it's well, you know, my soybeans, the, the seed coat on it isn't holding up very well. I'm going to handle my soybeans. I'm getting seed coats breaking off. Well, they start looking at micronutrients and what are some of the functions of these various micros? Copper, for example, has a function with seed coat flexibility. When you start getting really large size to soybean seeds, for example, well, those seed coats just don't hang on very well and it may come due to a bigger need for copper than we normally have. So if, you're, if you've gone on your farm from 40 bushel soybeans to 60, 70, 80 bushel soybeans, this is probably something you're noticing. You're getting larger seed size, but you're having some seed coat issues. Copper would be a good nutrient to start with. Okay, so seed coat resiliency is definitely something copper can do. And let me just say this, we're not gonna go through all the things that copper does in the plant, because it does a lot. But we just wanted to focus today on two things that we think are super important and could be a big factor for you on your farm. So the seed coat resiliency is the first one. The second one is disease control. Now, there are two different things that we're talking about here. Sometimes copper gets used as a foliar treatment for bacterial diseases. I'm not gonna say it's great, but it's better than a lot of other things that we've tried over the years. So foliar is one method. Now the other method is just having flat out more copper in the plant. If you're a wheat producer, you probably have heard about having good levels of copper so you have better disease tolerance. But in terms of all crops, we wanna have high levels of copper so we have just better natural tolerance to a lot of diseases. One other thing, Brian, when we talk about the plant and being resilient to different things, having a good, strong stalk is certainly important. We saw it again this fall that there are some fields that just really gave up at the end of the year and we had stalk quality issues. Well, farmers right away will look at potassium as, man, where are my potassium levels at? And in some cases, potassium was okay. After potassium, the next factors that we look at are manganese and copper for good stock quality. So if you're short in one of those micros like manganese or copper that we're talking about today, that would be another step that you may do on your farm in terms of building soil fertility up to try to have better quality stalks, more lignin, uh, a tougher outer shell to that stalk to hold up even late in the season. Just like with all other nutrients in the soil and in the plant, we want you doing some analysis. Do some soil testing and find out where your copper levels are at. On a DTPA test, we're usually looking at two to three parts per million. On a Malik 3 test, it's going to be a little different than that, probably going to be a little bit higher. Uh, in terms of tissue analysis, you also want to monitor that as you go throughout the year, just to get an idea how are we doing overall in terms of sufficiency or deficiency. Then the question is, well, how am I going to apply copper? So just like I said earlier, if you're doing some applications, let's say you're a specialty crop grower, and you normally do some copper applications fully year or at least from time to time, you do these foliar applications to control bacteria. Okay, uh, now you're probably going to put a lot of copper into your soil. If you've done that off and on over a period of 20 years, let's say, your copper levels are probably great in the soil and you don't even need to add any more copper. But otherwise, one of the things that I would encourage you to do is take a look at copper sulfate. It's what we're using this fall on our farm. You can put that into solution and then go spray it out. That way you could do some variable rate very easily. You can cover lots of acres real quickly. It doesn't take a whole lot. And once you build those copper levels up, usually they're gonna stay up pretty high because the actual need for every crop is very little each year. So when you remove the grain off your field each year, not a lot of copper leaves with that. So what I'm trying to say is if you build your copper levels up, Copper doesn't really leach through the ground or anything like that. It's gonna stay there until it gets used eventually on your farm. We hope we've raised your curiosity about copper and what your levels are on your farm. And I'd strongly encourage you as you get those soil tests done this fall, make sure you're getting complete analysis. As Brian said, it all starts with just knowing where you're at on a parts per million basis with copper and then starting to address it with a soil build program yet this fall. Another thing we want you to take a look at this fall and quite frankly year round is what do you have for weeds on your farm? Can you identify this week's Weed of the Week? 